that's about it for now. Let's summarize. Peptic ulcer disease, or PUD, is where ulcers are present in the GI tissue, typically in the stomach or duodenum. Once erosions progress through the muscularis mucosa layer, they are considered ulcers. Duodenum ulcers are more common than gastric ulcers. Peptic ulcers can be caused by Helicobacter pylori infection. In said usage, which decreases mucosal protection, or more rarely, Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, which is from increased acid production. Smoking may exacerbate symptoms. Epigastric pain is the most common presenting symptom. Duodenal ulcer pain is decreased with food ingestion, while gastric ulcer pain is greater with food ingestion. Other symptoms include heartburn, upper abdominal fullness, nausea, reflux, and belching. Up to 70% of PUD may be asymptomatic, in which case they may present initially with a complication, which could be acute upper GI bleeding, ulcer perforation, or acute gastric outlet obstruction. The presence of alarm symptoms should prompt EGD immediately to rule out cancer. These alarm symptoms include dysphagia, odinophagia, persistent vomiting, weight loss, iron deficiency anemia, and a family history of GI cancer. New onset dyspepsia symptoms in patients over 60 should also prompt EGD evaluation. Patients with evidence of ulcers should undergo non-invasive testing for H. pylori via either ureus breath test or H. pylori stool antigen test. If a patient undergoes EGD, antral biopsy should be taken for H. pylori testing. If H. pylori testing is positive, treatment consists of PPI therapy with two antibiotics, clarithromycin and either amoxicillin or metronidazole, for two weeks, and then repeat testing to confirm eradication at four weeks. If H. pylori testing is negative, PPI therapy should be initiated and other lifestyle modifications should be made, such as smoking and alcohol cessation and stopping NSAID usage. For all cases of refractory PUD, EGD should be performed. Gastric ulcers should always be biopsied, and suspicious duodenal ulcers should be biopsied. In cases of refractory PUD, Zollinger-Ellison syndrome should be suspected and ruled out. ZES is more likely in cases with multiple ulcers, and ulcers in the distal duodenum. ZES is diagnosed by gastrin levels. Hypercalcemia should also be suspected in refractory PUD, and serum calcium levels measured. If benign ulcers are present, they should be treated with PPI, and if EGD biopsy reveals H. pylori infection, another round of antibiotics should be performed. For most ulcers, Repeat EGD with biopsy should be performed around 12 weeks after therapy to monitor healing and to reevaluate for cancer and H. pylori. Patients with refractory ulcers remain on chronic PPI therapy. Surgery can be performed in PUD with complications such as acute upper GI bleeding, perforation, obstruction and malignancy, or as the very last line of treatment of severe ulcers refractory to medical therapy.